Hello, welcome to the video number 10 of the series Exploring ROS with a Chewy LED robot. In this video, we are gonna see line by line how to implement the algorithm bug one, the same we have talked about in the previous video. We have compared with bug zero and see the cases where bug zero can foil. So the necessity of using bug one algorithm. Okay, so in order to show that, I'm gonna use RDS, ROS Development Studio, provided by the construct. If you don't have an account yet, you can create one for free and use, an, use the system for free. Just following the, this link here, sign up. You can find the link in the description of this video. As I have my own account, I'm gonna just do the sign in. And after having your account, you're gonna be able to see this screen here, the list of projects, okay? So I have the project already created for this video. Uh, if you prefer, I can share the project with you. Experiment Ross, video 10. You just need to send your email at uh, hearing the comments of the video. Or you can also create a new project here and clone the repositories we are using to see the simulation. So we have just two repositories. We have the motion planning package and also the simulation repository, which is basically composed by two packages, the description of the robot and the words that we are using to simulate the robot, okay? So let's open the project here and wait a few seconds until our environment is ready. Okay, there it is. So first of all, let's start the simulation. Okay, so I'm gonna open the simulation from my own simulation workspace, not an RDS robot. And that's the file that I need, my words, word launch file. Let's put it to the right side, make it bigger. And in the meantime, let's take a look at the code. So here in the simulation workspace, we have my words package and this launch file here. I am opening, let's make the test bigger. I'm opening the word three file, okay? Which is this file here. I have created uh, in the pre for the previous video and you can, you just need to update your repository if you have been following this series. So let's check the word here. And basically for this, for this video, we want to spawn the robot more or less at this position here, which is the starting position. And we want to get this point here which is more or less y equals to minus three and x equals to zero. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, I have here the, the spawn launch file, so let's use it. I want to spawn the robot at the position, let's make it by code. So just open a web shell and type ROS launch my two wheeled robot spawn and as argument y equals to h okay we're gonna have our robot here at this point here okay and let's launch the bug one file so in the meantime while the robot's performing a task which can take some minutes uh, we are gonna see how it it's working how our code is organized. Okay, so ROS launch, motion plan, bug one. Whoops. That's the code you want to use. And this launch file is basically, uh, basically needs some arguments. So let's take a look here. Uh, desired position. Okay, so uh, I want for Y minus three which is right here at this point. And X, I want to, to go to the point zero. I think it's more challenging for the robot. For this case, we're gonna see why. Okay, so let's change it here. And let's just start. So bug one, launch. And now the robot's gonna start to perform the task, which is basically, let's take a look here at our images, examples, bug one. So the, the robot start going to the point and it finds an obstacle. Now it starts to in the second state, which is circumnavigate the entire obstacle. 
this is gonna uh, take several minutes so let's start taking a look at the code okay uh, so let's do that let's close some launch files you're not gonna work with them anymore so basically for the bug one algorithm I have started from the bug zero because they are quite similar uh, with a few modifications okay so in bug zero we had two states which is go to point and while following until the robot can go to the point again and for the bug one we have go to point and if the robot finds an obstacle it has to circumnavigate the obstacle the entire obstacle until it reads it reads the the point that the robot met the obstacle at the first time and then go to the closest point which is around the obstacle and finally go to point again after reaching the closest point to the obstacle okay so we have created here a new, new variables so for the circumnavigating task circumnavigate state I am saving here the starting point which is a point ob object I'm importing from geometry messages and also the closest point which was more or less right here the robot has just passed uh, very close to this point so actually for in this simulation the closest point would be right here okay so the robot wants to get here uh, and I'm also counting the time that I have changed the state because you're gonna see uh, in the next lines why we need that okay so we have some callback methods here but they are the same thing we have been using for the bug zero so it's not necessary to to explain it again uh, we have the callback for the odometry data to have the position of the robot callback for the laser scanner also the same thing uh, we have this function here change state which is basically the same of bug zero but we have changed the the number of states we have now three states okay so basically in this st state zero we are calling we are activating the behavior go to point so we are using the same service we haven't quantified it it's not necessary and we are turning off the wall follower task okay so this is nice to see because we have used the wall follower for the bug zero because the name of the state is wall following but for the bug one we are also using the wall follower task for two states the state number one which is circumnavigate obstacle and go to the closest point also we are using wall follower uh, why is that because for these two states we are basically following the obstacle so this is a wall follower behavior this is a, the wall follower task we are performing the only difference is that we are for the the state number one which is circumnavigate obstacle we are following the obstacle until we reach the the starting point again okay so the robot has just reached the starting point here so we can see in the shell it has changed the state so it started going to the point and then circumnavigating the obstacle and now it's going to the closest point okay so this is what happened so the robot went here in the light blue line and now it's going to the closest point so it is following the the purple line here okay so finally uh, we are using the same tasks but we are tracking the points that the robot has reached the starting point and now to the closest point okay uh, so for this I have calculated I have created some functions to calculate uh, the distance between the robot position and the point we want to reach because it, this is necessary to to get the closest point to the obstacle okay so uh, we are calculating here every time the the distance between the robot and the the goal we want to reach so the robot has just finished the task because we want to know the closest point to the goal okay so as you could see that was the closest point to the goal that's why the robot stopped it here and went to the goal after this point okay so this is a new method 
we have changed also the change state method because we have a new state now. Normalize angle is an old method. Uh, here at the main function, we have we are using the new variables: circumnavigate, closest point, starting point, and we are counting the loop, the state time. Uh, why am I doing this? So we are using the same subscribers and the same services and starting from the state zero, which is go, go to the point. And I am counting here the time we have changed the state because when we change to the state number one, which is circumnavigate the obstacle, we have to follow the obstacle to, to perform the wall following until the robot reaches the starting point again. But it turns out that when you start the circumnavigate task, you are at the robot is at the starting point. So this state is gonna check if the robot is is close to the starting point. I'm doing this right here. And if it's close to the starting point, we have to change the state to the state number number two, go to the closest point. But actually we haven't followed the, we haven't circumnavigated the entire obstacle yet. That's why I'm counting the time here. Okay, so count state time. Uh, greater than five seconds. Uh, five seconds here. I I am sure it's five seconds because I'm counting the number of loops we have performed based on the rate of my loop. Okay, which is twenty hertz. So every twenty times that I go through the loop, I am counting the state time. So this is in seconds. Okay. Uh, basically, that's it. This is how we can use the same behaviors we have implemented for debug zero and we have seen they working separately following a wall and go to a point and we have used the same behaviors to implement bug zero and bug one's motion planning algorithms. Okay, so I hope we can help you if you have suggestions, if you had problems to use it with the same robot or with a different robot, please leave a comment. Let's, let's exchange our experience with the different robots and different scenarios. And don't forget, if you like this kind of video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell to be notified about the videos we publish every day. Thank you.